Good night and welcome to the Revelation Report, news through the eyes of prophecy. I am your host, Nicholas Parasham. It is such a joy to be in your homes tonight. Why don't you do us a favor? Go right ahead and like and share this video. We have a lot to talk about tonight. And tonight in our top stories, according to Christian Today, the latest report in Christian persecution finds Nigeria and Sub-Saharan Sub Africa the epicenter of jihadist violence, where China leads efforts to re refine religious rights. More than 5,600 Christians were killed for their faith last year, and more than 2,100 churches were attacked or closed. More than 124,000 Christians were forcibly displaced from their homes because of their faith, and almost 15,000 became refugees. Sub-Saharan Africa is the epicenter of global Christianity and is now the epicenter of violence against Christians. Its latest polls had indicated that Nigeria and North Korea are back at number one, according to the 2023 World Watch List, and this is being pulled from open doors of the top 50 countries where it's most dangerous and difficult to be a Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, we in the West, we are living in such a wonderful free land that we can be able to declare the name of Jesus at any point and any time we want. But in areas and in regions that we may not be aware of, there are bans on Christianity and persecution is happening right now. I want to bring in our guest tonight, and we are so privileged to have Dr. Isaac Shadrach, and I, I feel he's no longer a guest. I feel he's like <laughs> more family here on this program, and Dr. Shadrach, okay. it's so good to have you here tonight. Great. Thank you indeed. You know, when you look at the church worldwide, uh, Brother Nicholas, mm -hmm. uh, one, uh, one evaluator said, uh, you know, the churches, they, they exist in two zones. Mm. We have the comfort zone and yes. we have those that live in the conflict zone. Mm. And that doesn't mean we in the comfort zone or where we, where we are more liberated to practice our Christianity means that we have it easy. There is also wow. strong deception that is mm. here. There is so much, you know, fake news and bombardment. Yes. But those in the, in the conflict zone is where we, are, where we are highlighting tonight and we see all the difficulty. I'm reminded of Hebrews chapter 13 and mm -hmm. verse 3 when Paul indicated, remember them that are in bonds hmm. as bound with them and them that suffer adversary as being yourselves also in the body. You know, so some people are in adversary. Some people are in difficulty in terms of what's going on. Um, I remember Voice of the Martyrs, they did a, a recent evaluation and it says, you know, somewhere, anywhere all over the world, hmm. a Christian is slaughtered for their feet every six minutes. Wow. Every six minutes, Brother Nicholas. Wow. And that's, that's a very significant... A number of Christians that are being persecuted right now, you know, for their faith. And I want to bring in our, our, our other guest. Uh, he was here with our, in our program last week and is none other than Dr. J. Jailal. I think I pronounced his name wrong last, last time. <laughs> and my apologies for that, Dr. Jailal. And Dr. Jailal, it's such an honor to have you in our program again. Welcome back to the Revelation Report. Indeed. <laughs> thank you very much, Brother Nicholas, and thank you. Pastor Shadrach, it's a privilege again and pleasure to be with you, especially to discuss the subject of the persecuted church. Mm. I am looking forward to sharing a lot with you, including my own personal experiences about what persecution looks like and where it occurs. Wow. So, yes. Dr. Jailal, as, as we have you here, really quick, I know that you have been, you know, yourself have been at the forefront of persecution yourself. You faced it. Uh, it was in your face. And, you know, things has, <laughs> had happened, you know, to <laughs> you. It was there. Because uh, yeah, he was there, you know. And, and I want to springboard off of that before we get into our conversation tonight. But before we get into, you know, your experience, I want to find out from you, what are your thoughts on Open Doors and what, uh, you know, this particular report is talking about and the conflict zone uh, and the, the, the persecution that these Christians face right now uh, in our world. What are your thoughts on this? Well, thank you, uh, Brother Nicholas. I've been following uh, Open Doors for many, many years now and Voice of the Martyrs and a few other, but the main two are Open Doors and Voice of the Martyrs. Mm -hmm. I have actually supported them financially over the years because I trust their work and mm -hmm. their reporting. Now, what I see as a common thing occurring is that every year the list increases and the intensity increases, the number of Christians 
who are living in areas of severe mm. or high wow. persecution. That's wow. a preaching. And even mm. though the countries may vary, I, I, in fact, I have a list of them myself <laughs> from Open Doors in a book I wrote that deals with persecution. Yes, yes. It covers some of the, like, like North Korea and like Nigeria. So mm. I trust Open Doors. They're reporting these men, they went into dangerous territories. Wow. I have read some of the stories from Voice of the Martyrs, personal stories of people, men and women who have survived, men mm. and women who did not survive. Mm. And when I experienced my own church here later, I realized it is one thing to read a report or talk about a report, but my brothers and those of you listening to me, <laughs> it's a very That's different true. thing when yes. you are uh-huh. on the other end of the gun. If you get my drift, <laughs> yes. then you begin to cry out to God. Hmm. And that gave me a lot of empathy wow. for the countries I visited. Like I visited Pakistan, I visited wow. India, Vietnam, Cambodia, Malaysia, mm-hmm. if you get my drift. And many other countries I would like to visit. Uh, I cannot take risks by going to hmm. countries where persecution takes mm. place because I go to be a support and a help for those people. Wow. You know, so, an interesting brother Nicholas, you know, sometimes these uh, Christians in these environment may not have a lot of the luxury we will have in mm-hmm. our Christian church, in our homes, but their faith, yes. the fire of their faith and the genuineness of their faith mm. is so much richer. It reminds me of Revelation chapter 3, yes. where Jesus says, you know, buy from me gold that is tried in the fire. Mm. You know, and even Daniel talks about many shall be purified and made white and tried. And we are actually seeing that um, happening in our world and in our generation. You think for a modern generation that has been so advanced in technology and, and brought humanity to such a place, you are now fighting over wow. uh, religious differences wow. and the, 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 um, the unbalancedness mm-hmm. in terms of, of the biasness against those that stand for the name of Jesus. That's the issue. Mm-hmm. Stand for the name of Jesus. Wow. So uh, I want to throw this question to our both, our both guests, Dr. Chadrach and also Dr. Jailal. What does persecution look like? Uh, in, uh, maybe I should just take a little piece of it. You know, uh, mm-hmm. Matthew 11, Jesus talks about, blessed is he who is not offended in mm-hmm. me. Uh, scripture tells us that before the world hates you, the world hates him. Wow. You know, and in Mark's gospel, chapter 10, it talks about take heed to yourself. Uh, for they shall deliver you up to the council. And I guess that's what Dr. G, mm-hmm. I experienced. And even in the synagogue, you shall be beaten. Wow. And you shall be brought before the rulers and for the king. And here's the reason why. For my namesake, for a testimony against mm. them. When you look at some of the other uh, religious groupings that are there, that's not really happening much because mm-hmm. of the name that they carry. But people have a problem with the name of Jesus Christ wow. of Nazareth. Wow. And everybody that so carry that name faces the brunt of the hatred against God mm. and because we represent Christ. Scripture went on to say in Mark chapter 13, our fathers will deliver their sons, mother-in-law will give up their daughter-in-law and this will go all the way up mm. to the seal number f- uh, five in the tribulation mm-hmm. period where people will be slaughtered and beheaded because right. of the name of Jesus. Wow. Dr. J, anything you want to add to that? Well, I totally agree with you, brother. That's exactly correct. Let me add a few more little pointers here. Jesus himself told his disciples persecution will come. Hmm. So that's a biblical teaching from the Lord himself. Hmm. That's something we made up. That's something we want to do. Now, after he resurrected, ascended, sorry, after he ascended and the church began on the day of Pentecost, what happened immediately after Pentecost? Read Hmm. the book of Acts. The persecution began. Peter and John, okay? And they were jailed and they were imprisoned and they were beaten. But you notice their response? The Bible says, uh, I think in Acts chapter 5, they counted it themselves as a privilege and they rejoiced Hmm. that they were counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to make a point here very quickly. They didn't say, well, um, where's my prosperity that I'm supposed to have (laughs) and I'm supposed to be the head and not Mm -hmm. the tail. Let me tell you something, church. Jesus never promised anybody that. Hmm. That's a man-made doctrine. Jesus promised problems, persecution, suffering. Read the entire book of Acts. Do you know all the apostles died? Mm. All 12 apostles, but Judas, we know he killed himself. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. The other 11, apart from John, who actually was exiled to the Isle of Patmos in the Mediterranean, all the other Faced. apostles were killed, mm. martyred, 
Peter was crucified upside down under Emperor Nero's reign, one of wow. the worst emperors in the Roman Empire. Mm. Paul was beheaded under Emperor Nero. Mm -hmm. So when you study, that's uh, the voice of the martyrs, the founder Richard Wurmbrand, mm -hmm. I read his story, he and his yes. wife. Mm -hmm. tortured they were Christ. tortured in Romania for, I think it was 14 wow. years wow. before God released them. That's wow. why I have respect for voice of the martyrs. Because mm. that man and his wife suffered. Mm. See, we have to be careful to distinguish those who say they're supporting ministries, but they're supporting some money-making, profiteering organization, mm. and those who have walked the road. There is something about walking the road mm. and enduring the beatings. Brother Paris Ram, you asked, what does it look like? Well, I made a list of what it looks like, and here are some things. Females, long, young girls being raped and humiliated wow. and forced to convert from their religion, Christianity, to something else. Abduction, sexual slavery, mm. beatings, torture, even of children, wow. plundering of homes and churches, incarceration, forcible conversion to other religions, mm. forcible marriages, marginalization wow. as second-class citizens, loss of property, loss of employment, mockery, threats, death by beheading, crucifixion, mm. and other brutal forms of murder. Oh, wow, These wow. things are not something in the distant past. Hmm. These things are still occurring today. Wow. As a matter of fact, according to Open Doors Report and Voice of the Martyrs and a few other organizations, there is more persecution of Christians now than ever before. That's correct. correct. That's so correct. that's why we, as that verse Brother Shadrach read, we must remember those who are in chains. Wow. I yes. want to make one more comment, Brother Nicholas. Yeah, I have to definitely. say this. We live in the Western world. I live in the USA. You live here in Trinidad. And many people who live in the Western world come for Christianity. Oh, yes, we just want a good life. Yeah. Well, when you travel to India, as I have, and to <laughs> Vietnam, as I have, and to Pakistan, as I have, and a few other nations, as I have, they don't live the comfort life. Hmm. They live a life under constant surveillance wow. and constant threat. Wow. And I'm going to share a little bit with you later on, yes. but it is a very risky life. Yes. They know that any moment wow. something can happen. Wow, and they're definitely. always on the lookout. It's like, okay, be vigilant, be alert. So definitely. you can't compare Christianity in those nations mm -hmm. with Christianity in the Western That's right. world. Definitely. You know, Brother definitely. Nicholas, let me just add something mm -hmm. quickly there. You know, uh, he highlighted the apostles dying, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm also reminded of the, of the Reformation period. Yes. When people begin to read the word, when mm -hmm. the word of God begin to be translated and be available to everyone, yes. Yes. many men were, were buried, uh, were, were, were stoned, were fed to the lions, were cut asunder, um, and even burned to the stake in the right. public domain. Mean. Mm -hmm. uh, 2 Timothy 3, verse 12 and 13 says, Yea, and all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Mm -hmm. But then there's another swing to that because the other verse says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. There are some of the individuals that are fueling this type of activity. Mm -hmm. They think that they're doing a service to God. Mm -hmm. You know, and the Bible talks about that, how they will think they do God a service by beheading, by wow. doing different things. Yes. Wow. So yes. evil men and seducers, and they are deceived, but also deceiving and being deceived. Yes. So sometimes they are very passionate. They are very zealous of what they are doing mm. and don't realize that they are, they are actually, it reminds me of Paul mm -hmm. and the Lord had to appear to him in Acts chapter 9 and says, you, why do you persecute me? Wow. You know, so Brother Nicholas. Wow, definitely. And you know, as we're looking at, at persecution, I, mm. I want to bring in Dr. J again because, uh, you know, you've been sharing with me privately on some of the experiences that you had in Vietnam and I, I want you to share that with our folks today and ladies and gentlemen, mm. let me tell you something, this guy, when we talk he about persecution... It. He lived it. He lived it. <laughs> you know, you know, before Dr. J comes back in, you know, Dr. Shadrach, you and I, we talked about uh, the, the rewards in season two. We talked yes. about those different rewards. And we talked about the martyr's reward and that martyr's crown that they're going to get. And we jokingly said that, you know, that's one crown that we're not going to go after. But I, I, firmly, <laughs> I firmly believe, you know, that, that, that God has risen up a people, you know, that will be so bold that will go after it, yes. you know, because of the circumstance and the situation that they're living in, that they're willing to lay down their life. And Dr. J is one of those individuals that was willing to lay down his life for the sake of the gospel. So, Dr. J, what happened in Vietnam? <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Nicholas. And um, first, let me say this. I don't want to sound mean. The people of Vietnam are lovely people. Yes. They're nice people. I yeah. enjoyed my times in Vietnam. So, to the credit of the people of Vietnam, 
Praise God for you. Amen. But as all of you may know, Vietnam is still a communist nation. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the proclamation of the gospel, especially if you're a foreigner, you don't get visas unless you apply, which they will not grant, okay? Mm. So I visited, I visited Vietnam four times, wow. by God's grace, only by God's grace. Mm. I did not care about the consequences when I went there. I was fully aware of the threat to my life. Wow. Now, I went to do underground work. <laughs> Now, what do I mean by underground work? Well, in Vietnam, you have what's called the registered churches. They're registered with the government, and they have some sort of protection, but they also have some sort of compromise. They have to compromise with the government. The people who are very evangelical, and they ain't into the Bible, and they want to preach Christ and only mm. Christ, they go underground. By wow. underground, it doesn't mean they're building a cave under the earth. By underground, it simply means they meet in homes. Under the, oh. on the radar. <laughs> under the radar. They wow. can't be. But even so... You can be discovered. So mm -hmm. on my first visit to Vietnam, I had gone there for two weeks. That was the plan. And I was looking forward to it. The pastors welcomed me with open arms. And we had a great time going from place to house to house. House to house. Mm -hmm. Success. Each house church I went to had minimum of 50, maximum of almost 100 people. Wow. Oh, that's great. Wow. It was a marvelous thing to see them huddled eagerly waiting to hear the word of God, especially mm. as I was as an American going there. They were just so happy for my presence. Little did I know what the devil had in store and God allowed. <laughs> you see, the devil had, and I'm not going to, I don't regret my experience. Let me tell you this before I share you. I am glad for that experience. <laughs> because <laughs> I would have been scared <laughs> not, for that not, experience. Not that, <laughs> not that I want a modest crown, okay? Yeah. I am not looking to be martyred like Peter and Paul. No, I'm yeah. not. I'm an American like you. Know. But, but it happened. So one of the home visits, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, I heard the roar of engines, or play, uh, play, motorbikes. Yes. And my interpreter standing next to me, he was translating my English to Vietnamese. He said, Pastor, trouble. I said, what do you mean? Wow. He said, the police are here. Oh, no. Wow. <laughs> police are here. I said, what do you mean? He said, the police are here and they are going to arrest you. Hmm. And I said, okay, well, let's see what happens. So I began, I continued preaching. They, they disembarked on their motorbikes and they walked right into the room uninvited. You see, hmm. that's the police, police, the communists. They walked uninvited into a man's private home. Wow. Wow. And there they sat down by the door entrance, the exit. So in other words, I couldn't exit. I couldn't run out. There was no way I could even attempt to escape. Wow. Nor did I have any, any intentions of escaping. I was going to... Face it. I was going to preach to them. <laughs> so <laughs> there I was preaching to the people. Nothing about the communist government, no politics. Mm -hmm. Now, not ill-speaking, Buddhism or any such thing. Just preaching the pure gospel of Christ about salvation and helping them to grow in Christ. When I was done... I attempted to leave knowing that it wasn't going to happen, but I just did it anyway. Mm -hmm. And immediately, the police officers who were plain clothes, they got up and they shut me down and said, sit down, in Vietnamese. Wow. Then they pulled the table and 10 of them surrounded me and I became the object of questioning. Hmm. They took my, seized my American passport, they took my photo, and all the people who were there with me in the room, they fled to the kitchen, not because they were fleeing the scene, but to give the communist police privacy. The privacy. Mm -hmm. They were in the kitchen. My interpreter stayed with me, of course. Well, that drilling or drilling or whatever, chilling, <laughs> took a, a long time. Yeah. And it was very, they were very angry. And um, um, I, turned to, I turned to my interpreter and said, what, do, what is happening here? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, um, it looks like you may have to go to jail here. Oh, wow. And I'm like, are you, are you, are you serious? He said, yes, they're discussing. Hmm. Anyway, I was praying to the Lord. I said, Lord, now I don't mind if you want me to go to jail. I came here knowing the potential risk. So it wasn't like I was going into safe territory. Hmm. I knew beforehand I was going into dangerous territory. It almost reminds, it reminded me of the time Paul, God told Paul, go to Jerusalem, but trouble awaits you there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he was forewarned. Yes. I want you to go. But know that trouble awaits you. Wow. So I wasn't taken aback, but God gave me the right words at the right time, mm. in the right tone of voice, to disarm them mm. so that they actually let me go. But wow. with a very strict warning. They said, now listen, we're going to let you go. Here's your passport. Take it back. Mm. Don't do it again, because the next time will be worse. Wow. Well, there was a, people were scared. 
And I realized that they were scared because they had experienced this before. Right. Wow. Right. This was not wow. many of the pastors I met in Vietnam had already been incarcerated for preaching Christ. Wow. They already had their arms broken. Oh, wow. They, they, oh. People show, have shown me scars on their body. Hmm. Scars on their body because of preaching Christ in the underground churches. Wow. Anyway, to make a long story short, we reconvened <clears throat> immediately at the hotel and I told the, the guys who were with me, the pastors, the Vietnamese pastors, what do we do? Let's pray about it. You guys go to bed. We'll wake up in the morning and then we'll discuss what the Lord said. Mm -hmm. So we all went to bed. Of course, we were all kind of, to some extent we were shaken, but not really shaken. You know, it's just like it happened. Mm -hmm. So we woke up in the morning and the guys at breakfast, we agreed. I said, what did the Lord say to you? Or they all said, well, the Lord said, let's keep doing what, we, what you came to do. Wow. And I said, me too. Let's keep on doing. Wow. So we went on for another four days. But now there was a difference. Every time we met, we felt, well, it could happen. It could happen. It could happen. Mm -hmm. We were away expecting it to happen. Hmm. And then the day before the last day, it happened. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and it was worse. Oh, wow. It was much wow. worse. The level of anger and uh, there was a conflict between the Vietnamese pastors and the police officers. And I thought they were going to break up the, the man's house. Mm. They seized my video camera, which I had. But, you know, smart thing, the guy, the pastor who had my video camera, mm -hmm. actually removed the video cassette. Oh, right. wow. I lost my camera, but not the video cassette. Right. Okay. Anyway, they went on and they sat me down again. And this time it was really bad. And I could see the anger flashing on their faces. Mm. I turned to my interpreter again and I said, what now? He said, this time you are going to jail. Mm. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Praise wow. God. <laughs> I prayed. The other people were praying again in the kitchen or wherever they were huddling. And we were trusting God for a miracle. This session took longer than the first session because mm -hmm. I was the second time I was breaking the rule. But once again, God, through the Holy Spirit, gave me the advantage. Wow. He gave me the grace. He gave me the peace. He gave me the assurance that mm -hmm. deliverance would come. That I wouldn't go to that jail. Even though I was prepared to die I knew full well, brothers, hmm. that the possibility of rutting in a J Vietnamese jail cell wow. was very yeah, real. Wow. But I already had accepted that F-A-T-E by F-A-I-T-H. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, yes. God intervened. Hmm. Once again, they gave me back my passport and they gave me a, my warning. But wow. that warning was no longer needed because I was leaving the next, the next, day, next day or two. Wow. So it was fine. I hugged all the officers. I thanked them for doing their job. Good. I even Good. gave the lead officer a bag of chocolates. A lot of, there were 40 chocolates in that bag, which I had brought for the pastors and, the, and their children. I gave that bag, and I was released by God's grace. Wow. Now, wow. The upshot is this. I can no longer return to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. My name is blacklisted. Even though I was able to return to, uh, three times subsequently, but no longer wow. can I return. So wow. I know the experience of suffering persecution. I did not suffer the persecution as these other pastors literally did. Mm -hmm. But I was under the gun, so to speak. I was under the gun. Wow. And I know many pastors in Vietnam and India and Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Personally, yeah. because I've been to these countries who have literally yeah. been mm -hmm. beaten, literally been incarcerated. Yes. And you know what? Mm -hmm. When they're released, they come right back and they continue to proclaim the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What a powerful testimony. Yes, Great for definitely. Him. Indeed. indeed. You know, and again, you know, uh, it's all because of the name of Jesus yes. that we always see this attack that is mm -hmm. about Nicholas. Very definitely. valid point. You know, as, as we're talking about uh, what Pastor Jay has experienced, you know, for him, that was just one experience. And there were multiple times that he had these different experiences in different countries. But can you imagine living in a conflict zone? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. in our part of the world, we are free, quote unquote free, yeah. but we can declare Jesus anytime we want. You know, uh, we, we, we can pull up at the side of a road and set up a, a truck or mm -hmm. a music system mm -hmm. and we can just declare the name of Jesus. We can walk into somebody home and just tell them about Jesus but in these countries you have to be underground and hidden you know I want us tonight and I want to ask uh, Pastor Jay to pray for those that are living in a conflict zone tonight correct, correct. but before we do that all of this that we're talking about all of these different martyrs and all of these different persecution that's happening is actually a sign that Jesus talked about 
that will lead Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that will lead us into the end times. There will be persecution before the rapture, and there will be persecution after, after. the rapture yes. takes place. Yes. And I want you to ask yourself a very sobering question tonight. And that question is simply this. If Jesus, and I asked you this last week, and I'm going to ask you it again. If Jesus should put on his appearance this very moment, would you be ready? Are you ready right now? And if your answer is, well, Brother Nicholas, I don't know. Maybe I would like to know. Tonight is your night to make it sure. The Bible says it very plainly and very simple. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you shall, shall be, be saved. saved. And tonight, why don't you say this prayer after me? I want you to say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I need a savior. I need, I need a, a savior. savior. And I and right now, and right now, I've heard, I've heard that Jesus came, that Jesus came, and died for my sins, and died for my sins. Right now, right now, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Of all my sins, of all my sins. Wash me, wash me in the blood of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus, and make me whole, and make me whole. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, touch me. Now. Touch, Touch me now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father, every single person that is under the sound of my voice that would have said that prayer, I pray, God, that you will touch them and that you will speak to them, even in the night season, that you will give yes. them dreams and vision. Direction. Let that anointing, oh God, touch them even now, Father God. Let boldness arise on the inside of them and give them the joy of their salvation, which is a sign of your goodness and your mercy Hallelujah. towards them. So, Lord, I seal them until the day of your coming. Let not the enemy steal them away from you father but i pray that they will remain in your kingdom in jesus name amen, amen. amen. pastor jay why don't you go right sure. ahead and pray, pray for, for israel persecuted church. hallelujah one quick thing for a word of encouragement sure jesus said when they persecute you hmm. rejoice yes and be exceedingly glad, glad. For great. <laughs> For great is your reward in heaven. Yes. Amen. So the persecuted people are going to have, I believe, a greater reward for enduring the pain, the shame, the humiliation, mm. and dying for Christ. So don't be discouraged. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Most High God. Thank you, Jesus. The God of Israel, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. Father, we come right now to pray for our persecuted family. Because they are our family. Thank you. Lord. Same blood. Yes, washed Lord. in the blood of the Lamb, yes, Jesus Father. the Christ. And that blood is thicker than everything else. Mm. It's Christ's blood making us one. Thank you, Lord. And Father, I've been to many countries, as you know, Lord, and I've seen firsthand what they suffer. Jeez. And I'm amazed that oftentimes they say, we don't pray for deliverance from the persecution. They say to me, we want you to pray that God will give us strength to endure the persecution. Mm. And so mighty God, I pray for all the 315 million Christians who face persecution daily around the world in over 50 countries plus. Jesus. That you will strengthen them yes. to still love the persecutors, to love the enemies, Jesus. even as we have seen the example of Christ who forgave those who killed him. Hmm. What a remarkable example. Even as we saw in the example of Stephen, who forgave. So, Father, strengthen your people around you, the world, no Thank matter you, what Jesus. they go through. But at the same time, Father, bring them comfort, your healing grace. Put a hedge of protection. May their fate remain steady. Thank you. Lord. Never Jesus. deviating, never digressing, never faltering, unwavering, unswerving fate. And may they become more powerful in the kingdom of God work as a witness. Thank you. Lord. That the power of Christ will, will always endure. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. We bless them now yes, and we Lord. thank you for their lives in the mighty name Hallelujah. of Jesus the Christ. Amen Hallelujah. and amen. amen. Whoa, whoa. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Hallelujah. Dr. G, for your prayer. And, you know, for all those in the persecuted nation, we are here to encourage you and take our reports and send it around you. Well, Dr. G, as you travel back to your homeland, uh, to the United States, we'll mostly connect with you sometime in the future. It was great having you here uh, both last week and this week. Aisha Bala Nicholas will have been really thrilled and Definitely. also to share this out to many different locations. That is there. such a joy to connect with you in these sessions, Brother Nicholas. Definitely. Dr. J, before you go, I just want you just to address our, our viewers and just, you know, just any final thoughts that you have. Thank you very much again, Brother Nicholas and Pastor Shadrach for this wonderful privilege you have given me to share with your audience. To my audience, to the audience listening, I want you to know this. If you are in Christ, you are secure. Hmm. Amen. You don't have to worry. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. But I also want you to know 
that Christ did promise you some trials hmm. and afflictions and persecutions. I want to warn you, according to the biblical word, things will get worse and worse. No matter where you live, mm -hmm. even those countries that Definitely. don't have as much persecution as others, Definitely. including the USA where I live, the persecution already has come. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, stay strong in the faith, even unto death. Definitely. As in the book of Revelation, Definitely. even unto death. And you shall receive mm -hmm. your crown. Amen. Whatever that crown the Lord has prepared for you, you are assured you will receive that crown from Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Definitely. God Thank bless you. you. Thank God you so much. You, God bless you. Thank you so much, Dr. J and Dr. Shadra, for being with us. And to our viewers, if you said that prayer and you want to reach out to us, feel free. Message us on Facebook. You know, there are numbers at the bottom of your screen. Reach out to us. We would love to have you. So thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Until next week, God bless you.